Again, we take up a fresh problem with respect to cost of debts. The problem says a company make an issue of a bond of 15%, and this bond is having a fair value of rupees 100 each. Flotation cost is given as rupees 50. Redemption value. Now you have to concentrate on the redemption value. Till now we have seen that redemption value is always at the end of the maturity period. That means whenever the debt is going to mature, in that year the redemption value has to be shown. But in this problem, redemption is to be done in 5 annual installments. Redemption has to be done in 5 annual installments of rupees 200 each starting from the end of first year that means this bond is issued for a period of 5 years bond we can say is having a value bond is having a value of P1000 which has to be redeemed in 5 annual installments starting from the first year and every year 100 rupees will be ready. That means every year the company is going to make the payment of 200 rupees out of the principal amount and along with the 200 rupees the company will also give 15% as interest. This goes for a period of 5 years and we are supposed to calculate the cost of the bond. That we are supposed to calculate that what is the cost of the bond. This could be done with the help of a framing a table itself because we have to show the interest on the yearly basis, we have to show redemption value on the yearly basis, then only we are able to calculate that what is the cash outflow. Till now the interest amount was supposed to be considered as the cash outflow and in the last year Interest plus full redemption was considered as the outflow. But in this year, every, in this problem, in every year there will be some portion of the phase value along with the interest. That means we have to add, we have to add the interest amount, annual 200 rupee and then we get the outflow for every year. And every year we receive and then we apply our hit and trial method itself. Right? So we can solve this in this form. In the first column as a year, second column as the amount of interest that we are paying that is given as 15% redemption value, we plus interest and redemption value and we get the outflow and the outflow will be the, the summation of the column number 2 and column number 3. Redemption value is given as 200 that is 6 that means annual redemption. 200. 200, 200, 200 and 200. But when we calculate the interest, when we calculate the interest, keep in mind that interest is reducing. That means 200 interest or we can say uh, we are having as 15%, 15% on 1000. That will be 150. Right? So here as we have discussed that the interest has to be paid on the yearly basis and uh, along with the interest we have to pay the redemption value also which is 200. But the calculation of interest will be on the redeemed value and redeemed value is the 200 rupee every year. So in first year, first year we were having 1000 as the, the face value of bond. So 15% of 1000 that is 150. First year 200 has been paid. Remaining amount is 800. 15% of 800. It, it will come to as 120. Again 200 has been redeemed. It comes to as 600. 15% of 600. That will be 90. Again redeemed 200, 
it will come to as 400. 400 into 15 percent. That makes 60. And again, redeemed 200, remaining is 200, the balance amount, and 15 percent of this, that will be 30. So, this is your interest we can say. Now, when we calculate the cash outflow, basically what we can do, tax rate is also given as 30 percent. And as you are aware, the tax has to be adjusted on the interest amount. So, we can adjust the tax rate also. Like cash outflow we can say as 200 plus 150, 150 minus tax, 30 percent. So you calculate 70 percent of 150, 70 percent of 150 and that will be your interest amount, we can say 105. That means cash outflow in this case will be 305. In the same way you have to do for all the other four years. Again we can say we are having 200 plus interest, 200 plus interest, 200 plus interest and 200 plus interest after tax. Means we can say this cash flow is after tax. More appropriate way to write. Because we have adjusted the tax in the interest here itself. We will not adjust at the last. Right? So, cash outflow after tax, the redemption value, interest after tax, 305, 284, 263, 242 and 221. This is your new cash flow we have calculated. Earlier we were supposed to calculate the cost of debt from the interest amount. But here along with the interest, the redemption value of 200 has to be considered. So, we have to calculate the cost of debt from this cash outflow. That means hit and trailer method that we used to do. On that we have to apply this. On that we have to apply this. That means again you have to frame a table of 1 to 5 here. You can extend the table here itself. You can extend the table here itself. What you can say, you can assume the value of KD as 10%. Assume the value of KD because this is your new cash flow. This is your new cash flow. And the value of KD as you are aware, 0 0.909, 0 0.826, 0 0.751, 0 0.683 and 0 0.621. These are the rupee 1 value with respect to the present value. Present value factor table. If you reduce the value of rupee 1, at the rate of 10 percent, then this is your first year value of rupee 1, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year. What we can do? We calculate the present value. We calculate the present value, the present value of this. Because as you are aware, we are supposed to get the summation of the present value as rupees 950. 950 is your issue price. Because we have issue price, issue price we can write here itself, that is bond in the zero year. Phase value as 1000 minus the flotation cost is 50, it becomes as 950. 950 is your issue price. So we have to, means we want to know at what rate of cash flows, at what rate the cash outflows has to be discounted so that we are able to get the figure as 950. That means again we have to equate right hand side means on left hand side it is 950. The right hand side this figure. Now you have to multiply these two. So in this we can say that after multiplying the after tax cash flow with the discounted value of P1, we got these figures 277, 234, 197, 165, 137 and we received the summation as 1011.95 but we were supposed to get or we are desired to get 950 and we have received more than 950 that means this value has to be received uh, reduced and when this value has to be reduced the value of k has to be increased that means 10 percent is not the cost of capital it should be more than 10 percent so what we can do that again we can calculate at suppose we take the KD value is equal to as 
15 percent. Now we calculate at 15 percent, and then again we will calculate the present value. So we have taken the value of 15 percent from the present value interest factor table, and these are the values which are given at 15 percent for rupee one. You can calculate also with your calculator that one rupee divided by one plus 15 percent to power one. It will come to as 0 0.869, 0 0.756, and these are the values. And when we multiply this 15 percent value with the cash flow after tax, that is 305, we are getting the present value as this. And the summation is 900.950, 900.54. Now we got it. The equation that the value of KD is somewhere between. 10 to 15 percent, 10 plus something. That means we have to apply the interpolation because at 10 percent we are having more than 1000, at 15 percent we are having 900. That means at 10 percent we are having more than 950, and at 15 percent we are having less than 950, and the desired value is 950. We apply interpolation by interpolation. The value of KD after tax it is because we have already adjusted the tax. 10% something, 10% plus higher value. Higher value is given as 1011.85 minus desired value. Desired value is 950 divided by higher value 1011.85 minus lower value. Lower value is 900. 0.54 and multiply it with the difference of the cost 15 minus 10. Difference of the cost 15 and 10 that is 5. Whatever you get that will be your value of cost of debt. So when we calculate this we are getting as 10 plus 2.87 or else you can say as 12.87. This is your exact value of KD after tax. 12 means it is between 12, 13, 12.87. Always remember, we have adjusted the tax along with the interest in this problem. So that is why after this cost of debt is after tax. If we would have not adjusted tax here, then we would have adjusted here itself by the equation as you are aware that KD 1 minus T, this is before tax. You will get the value of KD after tax. Right? As the tax has been adjusted, we are not doing here. If the tax was not adjusted, we would have used this equation for computing the cost of debt after tax. Right? So this problem is over. Where we have seen the redemption value means we have tried to make an effort to calculate a new cash flow new cash flow and then we calculate the cost of debt with the help of trilateral method. Okay, thank you all of you.